Finding the cross product of two vectors can be tedious, time consuming, and on top of that, it's really easy to make mistakes. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through a method for finding the cross product of these two three-dimensional vectors that should really simplify your life. To keep this video brief, I'm not going to cover why this strategy works, because yeah. So we start by taking the x, y, and z for our first vector and writing them on top of the x, y, and z for our second. To keep track of our component vectors, we're going to place i, j, and k at the top of our little stack of numbers here. Now, if you're finding u cross v, like we are in this example, it's important that you place u on top of v and not the other way around, as u cross v does not equal v cross u. Now, this next part seems arbitrary and strange, so just hang in there. We're going to duplicate this little matrix and write it right next to the original one so that we now have two copies of the original list of values. All right, so this list of values is going to be what's gonna help us find the cross product for u and v. So we know that the cross product is going to give us a vector in the end. So we're gonna start by finding the i component of our vector. Since we're working with i, we cover up the i column in our chart, and this is where our process begins. We multiply on a diagonal from upper left to lower right by taking one times six, and we place the result here. We subtract the multiplication of the lower left to the upper right, or negative three times negative two. Cleaning this up results in zero as our i component of our cross product. And we can really just repeat this process for the j component by covering up the j column. So again, we multiply on a diagonal from upper left to lower right, taking negative two times four, and subtracting six times seven, multiplying from lower left to upper right. When we clean this up, we end up with negative 50. To find the final component, we can repeat this process, cover up our k column in our chart, and apply the same multiplication process. Multiplying on a diagonal from upper left to lower right gives us seven times negative three, and we subtract four times one, or the multiplication of the lower left to the upper right. Now all of this results in negative 25 as the final part of our cross product. And that's really the end of the process we managed to find the cross product of two vectors in three space. And while the strategy we used was weird and kind of random, with practice, I think this actually becomes pretty natural. Now, if I weren't trying to keep this video brief, I'd spend a little bit of time here talking about what the cross product actually represents. But in the interest of time, let me just say that u cross v is a vector that should be perpendicular or orthogonal to both u and v. One way to check that this is true is to calculate the dot product of u with the cross product, as well as v with the cross product. Now, if you've calculated your cross product correctly without any errors, you should get zero in both cases, as two vectors that are perpendicular have a dot product of zero. Now, if this video helped in any way, feel free to share it with a friend who's been struggling with the cross product, and keep it tuned in here for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.